Hello everyone, Katarina here, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video I have for you another card where you don't need any stamps or dies. I will be painting a moon. It's an easy card even if you never painted a moon just like me. Let's start with the supplies. You do not need the exact brands I'm using here, just use what you have. Since I'm going to be watercoloring, I will be using a watercolor cardstock cold press 300 GSM. I have a small watercolor palette from Windsor and Newton. Then I have a bunch of brushes. Uh, for the moon I will be using a medium brush, size 6 or 8 is good. And then something bigger if you decide to color the background. Also below all the stuff I have a hardboard on which I will be securing the panel on which I will be watercoloring using a washi tape. If you don't have a washi tape you can also use painter's tape. For the circle shape of the moon you will need something round. I thought I will be using this washi tape, but the circle was too small, so I decided to use something else, which you will see in a bit. But you can also use a cup or a compass to create a circle. And of course, to draw the circle I have a pencil. I will be making two versions of this card, and on the second one I will be painting dark sky with stars, and for that I will be also using a white paint. This one is the Copic Opic White, but you can also use gouache or an acrylic paint. And for the sentiment, I'm using black fine liner on one card and a white gel pen on the other. You do not need both pens. I was also planning to use a post-it to cover the moon when creating the stars, but I actually forgot to use it. And lastly, I have two cups with water, one for clean and one for dirty water. My watercolor cardstock is in the size A5 and I will be cutting it down to create an A6 panel which I will be adhering on top of a card base that I create myself. If you do not have a card base or paper trimmer, getting a watercolor cardstock in the size A5 is best, because all you need to do is fold it in half, then you will have a card base and a cardstock on which you will be painting in one. I taped my watercolor cardstock on top of the board using the washi tape, and then I grabbed another roll of tape, this one is a post-it tape. I thought if I used the washi for the circle it would be just too small, I placed it in the middle of the panel and softly outlined the circle with my pencil. Next I mixed my watercolors. For the moon I'm only using black and white. I predominantly wanted to use a grey, so I mixed the black and white together. And then the black will be to create some darker spots. For my palette I'm using a white plate from IKEA, but you can use the lid of your watercolor palette. I'm using a plate because it's just easier to clean. First I started with a little bit of grey, very light. What I found very helpful, I googled an image of a moon and I had it on a side on my iPhone as a reference. And as I was adding the darker colors, I was using that image. I was just dropping the darker colors and sort of let it to do its thing. However, I did do one big mistake. I didn't practice enough. I only practiced three or four times and then I made this video. I would really recommend that you practice more, especially if you never painted a moon. Just take a sheet of watercolor cardstock, create a bunch of circles and practice. And I'm sure your moon will be way better than mine. You can also let it dry and apply another layer and just play with it. Also when I was practicing I found one video here on YouTube very helpful. I will leave the link to this video in the description below. <music> After I was happy with the look of the moon, I let it dry and once it was dry, I worked on the sentiment. Since this is a completely DIY card, I used a black fine liner to write my own sentiment. But if you have stamps, you can just use a stamp. I decided to do a thank you card. I drew a line, so I'm writing in a straight line. Then I wrote the word thanks on a scrap of paper. This was just to make sure the sentiment is going to be centered. I wrote the word with a pencil first and then I used a black fine liner to write over it. I made sure the ink is dry before I erase the lines. 
And lastly, I used a double-sided tape to attach the panel on top of a white card base. I do like the card as it is, but I thought I make one more card and paint the background. I painted the moon in the same way. When I was filming this video, I painted this moon first and then the one I showed you first in this video. And I do like the moon on the first card better. On my trial card, when I was painting the black sky, I also mixed in blue and then the blue mixed in with the black. And it contaminated my colors when I was mixing the gray on this card. So the moon has spots of blue, which is not bad, but that was not my intention. Also, I think the black has hints of blue as well, because when I was photographing the cards, the background is blue. Also, I painted here the moon first and then the dark sky, but you can also paint the dark sky first and then paint the moon. I did it this way, just because if I mess up the moon, I didn't waste any paint on the background. After I finished painting the moon, I let it dry. And once the moon was dry, I first apply clear water on the background. And then I went with the black and covered the whole background. I applied the color directly from the pan. I thought adding the blue as well, but I decided not to. It was going to be blue anyway. I wish the black was more richer and I didn't like that you can see the strokes. But after I added the white splatter, you won't really notice those. I really did not enjoy this black paint. I don't like that it has the hints of blue. Maybe I'm imagining it, but on the photos it's blue. For coloring a background, I actually don't like using the small half bands. I do have the Konzai Tambi watercolors from Kuretake. And when I will make this card again, or when I will be creating a background, I will use those. It's a huge palette, but I do prefer it over the Windsor & Newton. This palette from Windsor & Newton for me, it's more like for traveling or coloring smaller images. To create the stars, I applied a Copic Opic white paint on an acrylic block. I first tried creating the stars with a toothbrush, where I dipped the toothbrush into the paint and used my thumb to splatter the paint. This didn't really work well. It might be because of the shape of the bristles on the brush, they are in a wavy shape. I think toothbrush with even bristles, those cheap ones should work. Then I tried a brush with more stiffer bristles and that worked-ish. I wasn't happy with the stars either. You can also use a normal brush that you use to paint the moon and then just tap it on your finger to make the splatter. You can also see that some of the splatter covered the moon. That's why I wanted to put a post-it tape or a scrap of paper over it to protect it, but I forgot about it. But I was able to soak it up with kitchen paper. Now was time for the sentiment. Since the background was dark, I used a white gel pen and because I could not use a pencil to outline the sentiment because it was just too dark, I wrote a thank you in a more simpler way, a more like typed type of a font. I don't really know what's the correct word for it, but I hope you know what I mean. If you don't want to write your own sentiment and don't have any stamps, you can also place the moon in the center, make it bigger and then you don't need any sentiment. You can also use different colors instead of gray and black. You can use red, purple or blue. It's all up to you. To finish up the card, just like with the first card, I used a double-sided tape and I adhered it on top of a white card base. And here are the cards side by side. I do prefer the one with the white background, not only because I wasn't happy with the black paint and also the moon is not perfect circle, but I just felt that something is missing. I thought it looked flat, not like a ball. And also it's missing a glow, but I have no idea how to create a glow around the moon anyway. Maybe I do this again sometime in the future after I practice properly and see how I develop. I hope you like these cards and I hope you will recreate something similar. I would really appreciate if you gave this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of my future videos. You can also follow me on Instagram and Pinterest. And you can also check out my blog for more photos and information. All the links are in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.